The goal is to try to get Marinette as close as we can to the location while keeping her in the water. Then we use a helicopter to cover the rest of the distance. That way we can ensure that she has enough time to return the jewel, Emily explained. How can I trust that this will work? Gabriel narrowed his eyes at Marinette despite Emily being the one laying out the plan. Emily rolled her eyes. Well, what's the alternative, Gabriel? Keep us in here forever? Adrian will be joining us eventually and you'll be all by yourself, Emily said snarkily. Gabriel's frown deepened and he looked over to Adrian who stood to his left. The boy also had an annoyed look on his face, mirroring his mother. If it's something he knew about his wife and son, it was that they were capable of holding grudges for all of eternity. Not that he differed much, so he begrudgingly concluded that he had to go along with it. There's no guarantee that it'll work, but it's the only idea we have, Marinette said truthfully. If it doesn't work, I'll probably die before I can get back into the water, so you won't have to dirty your hands by killing me in retribution. That should be good enough for you, shouldn't it? Gabriel turned his attention back to Marinette. He supposed this was the first time he had a civil conversation with her. The last time they spoke, she was barely conscious and he was trying to get answers out of her. She was sassier than he expected and a bit reminiscent of Emily. It made sense that Adrian took a liking to her. Adrian was distraught by her words and he almost didn't want to go through with the plan. According to her, the three-day time limit didn't reset, so that meant that their previous escapade had shortened her time considerably. She had only about four hours left. It will be tricky with the limited time, Gabriel hummed as he thought about the logistics of the plan. And who's to blame for that? Adrian glared at Gabriel. If he had just put her in the tank after finding them, they'd have another full day at their disposal. Gabriel cleared his throat before ignoring his son and continuing. I did some research on this village and had some people scout the area. It hasn't been inhabited in quite some time. The surrounding terrain is rugged and overgrown. The temple in question is at the summit of the nearest mountain but is densely surrounded by trees. Landing with the helicopter is not possible without a decent clearing in stable ground, he explained. It doesn't need to land. We can get equipment to descend while the helicopter hovers. Though, this does pose some issues with fueling if too much time is spent in the temple, Emily said. God, I feel like this is some bad action movie we're planning. She pinched the bridge of her nose. How long can the helicopter stay in the air before needing to refuel? She asked. Depending on external conditions, around 5 hours. It'll take almost 2 hours to get to the temple. There would be no issue if we could land, but if the helicopter needs to stay suspended in air, then the longest we can wait is 45 minutes. Any more than that will be too risky and we'll need to head back to refuel. Gabriel directed his attention back to Marinette. Either way, you're as good as dead if the supposed curse isn't broken. Marinette nodded. She was filled with nerves at the prospect of things going completely wrong, or even completely right. She never imagined that she would ever be free from the curse. What would she do with herself if she became human again? It honestly scared her. Then we proceed once I finish with all the preparations, Gabriel said. He nodded at the other three and left the room. Adrian let out a breath and gave Marinette a nervous smile. He was trying to be optimistic about the whole matter, but it was hard when every outcome except the best outcome would ensure her death. She seemed to sense his worry and returned his smile with a reassuring one. Don't worry about me. The most important thing is that we can return you and your mother back to normal. I'm just anxious that the curse might not be lifted. It would be devastating if their plans were off or not. Let's just hope that those gods that your people worship have some mercy, Emily prayed. No matter how thoroughly something was planned, things were always easier said than done. Just like how she was brought to the aggressed mansion in the first place, Marinette was transported on a cargo jet within a small tank. To avoid any more individuals from knowing of her existence, the same crew was hired. Whether they were trustworthy or if Gabriel had blackmailed them into keeping their mouths shut, she didn't know. Adrian, Gabriel, and the head scientist also went along, and as much as Emily wanted to go, she had to stay in the water in the safety of their home. But as a precaution, Gabriel had placed her in a small open tank so that she wouldn't drown should the curse be reversed. They had flown to the closest airport to the abandoned village where they had a helicopter prepared and ready to go. Even though Marinette knew that she was nearing the end of her time and that the pain would return the moment she got out of the water, she was still unprepared for it. Adrian helped her out and gave her towels to dry, but as her body dried and her legs formed, she doubled over in agony. Her insides felt as if they erupted into flames and her head throbbed so immensely that black spots invaded her vision. 
Adrian quickly lent her his support and held her steady. Can't we do something about this? Adrian turned to his father and pleaded. That will have to wait. We have to get to the helicopter first, Gabriel replied. Adrian bit his lip and reluctantly heeded his father's words. They were running on limited time after all. He grabbed the wool cloak they had prepared and wrapped it around her before lifting her and placing her into a wheelchair. They quickly made their way to their second mode of transportation. Marinette clenched the arms of her wheelchair tightly. It served as her only grip on what was happening around her. As soon as they were all situated in the helicopter, Gabriel ordered the pilot to take off. Adrian was seated beside Marinette and across from Gabriel and the scientist. He worriedly laid his hand on top of hers. He was sure the trembling he felt was from her and not because of the motion of the helicopter. Her whimpers were drowned out by the noise and he almost felt thankful for that. Gabriel nodded towards the scientist and the man stood, briskly walking over to some supplies that were sitting off to the side. Adrian watched him rummage through what looked like medical equipment. When he gathered what he needed, he pulled on a pair of gloves and approached Marinette. Adrian immediately straightened and stared at him with weariness and suspicion. Don't worry, I'm just going to place an IV and administer some anesthesia to see if it helps her. It won't be much since we do need her to be conscious, the scientist said. Adrian watched the man take Marinette's left fist, examining it. Her veins were as clear as could be from how tense she was. Taking an alcohol pad, he wiped her fist and prepared the needle. Adrian turned away, having never been fond of needles. Done. Now to administer the medication. Adrian turned his attention back to Marinette while the scientist hooked up the anesthesia. Within 30 seconds, he could see her furrowed brows relaxing a little. Her eyes opened slowly, but she still looked quite dazed. Has the pain lessened any? The scientist asked. Yes, a bit, she replied shakily. The three other passengers let out a breath of relief. If they could keep her sedated enough to ease some of the pain, but still have her conscious of what she had to do, then things should work out favorably. They arrived at the temple after about two hours, and Gabriel directed the pilot to hover over an area where they could safely descend. Adrian was never one to be scared of heights, but he was filled with nerves at the idea of rappelling down to an unknown area. Both he and Gabriel had taken a five-day course in preparation, but training was always done on open and sturdy ground. He geared up with Marinette strapped to him and with Gabriel's aid descended to the temple below. When they reached solid ground, he relayed to Gabriel through a transceiver that they safely landed. Gabriel directed the pilot to stay put as long as possible and they patiently waited for the two to return. After unhooking from the rope and unstrapping their harnesses, Adrian hoisted Marinette onto his back and proceeded to enter the temple. He hoped that it wasn't like one of those temples in the movies with all the hidden traps. But from what Marinette said, villagers went there to pray, so it should be rather safe. The biggest concern was structural hazards from the age of the temple. Do you know the weights of the other jewel? Adrian asked. He wanted to hurry before the lingering pain medication wore off. Marinette nodded and began to direct him. As he walked, he took the time to observe his surroundings and made sure to watch his steps. Vines covered the walls and broken and crumbled stones lay scattered everywhere. He didn't have to use his flashlight because of the light that streamed in from the windows. Marinette had him ascend a few staircases, but the temple was fairly straightforward. The prayer room was located at the very top and Adrian could spot the altar that stood at the back of the room. Adrian walked towards it and noticed the black jewel that rested on the altar, with an empty groove next to it, which he surmised was where the red jewel was supposed to be. He placed Marinette down and helped her over to the altar. She unclasped the pendant around her neck and held it shakily. It was the moment of truth and she couldn't help but be nervous. Freeing the jewel from its setting, she placed it neatly in the empty groove next to its partner. A bright pink light came forth and made them both close their eyes from the brightness. It swirled around them before dispersing out of the windows of the temple. When the light died down, they slowly opened their eyes and looked at each other questioningly. D did it work? Adrian asked. Visually, they were both human, so it wasn't possible to tell. But if the curse was lifted, that meant that Marinette should be feeling much better. Are you still in pain? I... Marinette trembled and brought her hands up to her mouth, tears beginning to gather in her eyes. She shook her head hesitantly. A big smile grew on Adrian's face and he scooped her up into a crushing hug. It worked! He exclaimed ecstatically while laughing. Her relieved laughter joined in, but her well-being was just one portion of the curse. We should hurry back to your mother to make sure that the curse is really broken, Marinette said. 
Adrian nodded and the two hurried out of the temple. Gabriel's voice came over the transceiver asking for updates and Adrian gleefully replied that they were on their way back. Marinette couldn't believe that everything had gone so smoothly. It was almost laughable how simple the solution was, but none of it would have been possible if she was on her own. Getting caught by Gabriel was almost a blessing in disguise. They returned to the helicopter and from there back to the plane to go home. Once they reached an area with decent reception, Adrian's phone blew up with notifications from his news app. All of them headlined breaking news. Humans were washing up on shore all over the world with no explanation as to where they came from. Emily awaited them when they got back to the mansion. The mother and son tearfully embraced, with Gabriel standing off to the side, knowing that he had still not been forgiven, but he was satisfied enough just to see his family whole again. Noticing Marinette standing there awkwardly, Emily waved her over and she joined them in their group hug. It tickled Marinette when she realized that Emily was probably being petty and making Gabriel feel even more left out. What will you do now? Emily asked as she pulled away from the hug. I don't know. Marinette could only muster a weak smile. I never imagined this would happen. The ocean is the only home I've known. We're all born being taught of our history and longing to become human again. But now that it's actually happened, she trailed off. She knew in the back of her mind that breaking the curse ultimately benefited her the most, and that there were probably many others who had resigned to a life in the ocean despite their innate longing. She had stripped them of everything they'd known, and now there were thousands of others just as lost as her. For now, my greatest wish is for there to be a way for us to gather together and figure out how we should go on. But the concept was much more daunting than it sounded. Her people were washing up all around the world, with absolutely nothing, not even clothes on their backs or any human languages at their disposal. They were all like helpless newborn babies. Emily turned her gaze towards Gabriel and looked at him expectantly, and he could only return it with a look of annoyance. I'm rich, not a miracle worker, he said. Well, dear, you have a long road to redemption, so I suggest you start working. You may not be a miracle worker, but you have connections. How many phone calls and deals would it take for something like a sanctuary to be created for these people? I'm sure there are many governments and humanitarian organizations that will be willing to work up some sort of solution. Emily smiled sweetly, despite the contents of her words. Gabriel let out a sigh and stalked off. He had a lot of work to do, after all, to earn her forgiveness. Why don't you stay with us for now, Emily suggested. I know it may not seem like it to you, but I do owe you my life. Adrian nodded enthusiastically, agreeing with his mother. Marinette gratefully accepted their offer, since she had nowhere else to go. Like Emily had said, humanitarian agencies wasted no time in trying to gather resources to help those in need. At Gabriel's request, and with his connections to the mayor, who had connections to other government officials, a small sanctuary city was created nearby. He, along with many other wealthy individuals, made charitable contributions to fund the project, and the castaways, as they were so called by the public, were brought to the sanctuary. Language specialists were recruited to aid in communications, and many volunteers signed on to help guide the individuals of the curious phenomenon. Marinette joined in on the effort, acting as a go-between. Slowly but surely, they began to be integrated into society. Theories of what happened, from aliens to brainwashed cult, continued to make its rounds. Marinette didn't pay it any mind and was just happy to see that things were working out. With her new responsibilities, she decided to settle within the sanctuary, much to Adrian's disappointment. But he still visited her often, and by the time he began university, he decided to volunteer there as well, tutoring the young children. Word has it that you're very popular, Mr. Agress. Marinette appeared from behind Adrian with a cheeky grin and held out a can of juice. He placed his journal down and gratefully took the can. Are you planning your next lesson? She asked as she rounded the bench and took a seat to his right. Yeah, what about you? You seem to have everything down, Pat. No one would believe that you've only been living here for a year. Mr. Measel still can't wrap his mind around TVs. Adrian chuckled as he thought about the grandfather of one of his students. Even when I tried to teach you the language, you picked it up really quickly. Marinette hummed and ran her finger along the rim of her own juice can. Being able to adapt was a necessity when you lived as long as I did. This is also much more than I ever wished for. I feel like I don't have time to spend bumbling around when there's so much to do, Marinette laughed. She leaned back and looked towards the sky, the scene so different from what she was used to. 
But I think everyone is trying their best and everything will be okay, even if I'm not around. If I died right now, I would be satisfied. Adrian gazed at her profile, how she closed her eyes and enjoyed the autumn breeze. She looked so refreshed with all her burdens lifted from her shoulders. He was truly happy for her, but at the same time, her words sorrowed him. She was barely given the chance to live a normal life. How could she be satisfied with so little? I won't be satisfied, he mumbled. She felt his hand rest on top of hers, and she turned a questioning gaze towards him to find him looking at the ground, cheeks flushed. A marked frown was etched on his lips and he turned to her with an obstinate expression. I know that you've lived for a long time, but you still have your whole life ahead of you. Time to make friends and do stupid things together, going on exciting adventures, or doing boring mundane things. Don't you want to fall in love? Grow old? His hand tightened around hers and she couldn't help but blush at the suggestion. Because I do. With you. Several seconds of silence passed, Marinette stared at him with wide eyes. He returned her stare, and as if just realizing what he declared, his face burst into flames. It had sounded so much better in his head. He hadn't meant to make such a passionate and public confession, and he whimpered in embarrassment, hoping that no one was around to witness it. He began to withdraw his hand, but she caught it and gave it a light squeeze. I'd like that, she smiled shyly, her cheeks still reddened. Adrian's mouth opened and closed several times, not quite processing her reciprocated feelings. She giggled at his fish-like expression, and it pulled him out of his stupor. He joined her in laughter, his embarrassment melting away into shyness. Their journey together was just beginning. <laughs>